normally I am not a huge fan of the whole pumpkin spice thing, but I am a huge fan of whiskey, distillation, and experimentation. So here's the plan, guys. To make a whiskey that tastes like a whiskey, that has a pumpkin presence and a hint of pumpkin spice. How's it going, chasers? I hope you're having a kick-ass week. I'm Jesse, and this is still it. And, and, if you actually think about it, all of the flavors, all of the flavor tasting notes that are in pumpkin spice are already found in whiskey. Cinnamon, nutmeg, cloves, and ginger, these are all naturally occurring flavors or tasting notes that I pick up in whiskey, and I actually really enjoy them in my whiskeys. So while I'm never really excited about pumpkin spice freaking everything season, the more I think about this concept, the more I think about a pumpkin spiced whiskey, the more excited I am for it. There is another aspect to the whole pumpkin spice thing that kind of gets on my nerves sometimes, and that is simply that pumpkin spice stuff almost never has pumpkin. <laughs> so when we make this whiskey, we are definitely going to be using pumpkin. We're going to be using a little bit of pumpkin spice, but we're also going to be using some standard whiskey ingredients and techniques that are going to help to augment flavors in the direction we want, like the yeast choice, for example. That's going to be coming up later, obviously. Our grist today is going to be 12 kilograms of ale malt, one kilogram of oats, half a kilogram of light chocolate, and one and a half kilograms of dark crystal malt. Uh, don't worry guys, don't fret all of the recipe. It, the entire process is going to be in the description down below in both metric and freedom units. The oats are being added in to bump up the mouth feeling a little bit. The light chocolate has been added in to give some sort of light coffee notes and hopefully hopefully a little bit of kind of dusty dark chocolate as well the crystal has been added in simply to bump up the general almost confectionery note of the whiskey a little bit make it a little bit sweeter a little bit of rounder and more candy like i started with 30 liters or eight gallons of strike water at 70 degrees celsius that's this much in freedom fahrenheit thingies uh, once i was mashed in i was aiming for uh, 60 two degrees celsius once again i would have loved to use more water than this honestly it's pretty freaking thick uh, but i am using a new piece of equipment from dr gratis and i just wasn't really sure exactly how much was going to fit in here by the way dr gratis did send me this piece of equipment to try it and give feedback on and show it off uh, but no they're not paying me and not sponsoring me or anything like that just you know full disclosure <laughs> Now for the pumpkin, and yes, my uh, kids have decorated anything that even closely resembles a pumpkin in the house. Uh, my wife's American and I guess they take after her. But anyway, <laughs> today we're going to be using uh, crown pumpkins, which I know probably don't look a whole lot like what a lot of Americans would think a pumpkin looks like. But it turns out it is a pumpkin and it actually tastes like pumpkin, not like water. I'm also going to be using some butternut. And while technically this is a squash and not a pumpkin, it actually, in my opinion, does a better job of tasting like pumpkin than pumpkin. You just want to skin them and then dice them up into small pieces. Pop them into an oven at 180 degrees Celsius with a little bit of melted butter to stop them sticking to the tray. Uh, and roast them until they're just starting to be tender and sort of borderline cooked all the way through, at which point pull them out to drizzle a little maple syrup over the top of everything, give it a toss, pop it back into the oven until it is completely cooked through and it's developing a nice little bit of brown sugar color and flavor. So for me, after it was all processed and roasted, that was four kilos of pumpkin. Back over at the mash tun, it's time to add the pumpkin in. And yes, obviously you can prepare the pumpkin ahead of time. I certainly did. Once the pumpkin goes in, I topped the mash tun up to the very tippy top. Because like I said earlier, this is a very, very thick mash. Absurd, in fact. Uh, so yeah, I wanted as much water in there as I could. Now, if you're using a passive mash tun like a esky or a cooler, insulate that thing up and let it sit for an hour and a half, perhaps giving it a stir in the middle. Uh, you may if you're using equipment like that want to aim for more like 64 degrees celsius rather than 62 that's your call 
I just left the elements on low, adjusting them up and down as needed to stick to 62 degrees Celsius. Gave it a really good stir every now and again and recycled some of the work from the bottom of the, the pot up to the top just to keep everything flowing through and make sure nothing you know scorched down in the very bottom of the mash tun. I mashed for a total of an hour and a half, which is obviously more than enough time for the grains, but you know, with the pumpkin, give a little bit of extra time. Once the hour and a half is up, it's time to mash out, which just simply means getting the liquid out of the grain and into your fermenter. So I just opened the spigot at the bottom of the mash tun and transferred it over into a fermenter with a, a cooking pot. Once all the free flowing liquid is out, it's time to batch sparge, which just means filling the entire mash tun up with 70, 75 degrees Celsius water, giving it a little stir if you're not worried about the wort being clear. I'm not. Uh, and draining it all back out again. Now you can keep repeating this process as many times as you want. The more you repeat it, you're going to get more volume and more total sugar into your mash tun, but you are diluting your original gravity. Just keep that in mind. For me personally, I kept sparging until I had 65 liters in the fermenter at 1.062 original gravity. Once the wash has cooled it down to 25 degrees Celsius, it's time to pitch our yeast. And yeast is another point in the process where we can sort of help nudge flavors in a certain direction or help to sort of craft the flavor profile of the whiskey. After a whole lot of thinking and pondering about this, I decided that a wit beer yeast was going to be the yeast that would fit the flavor profile of what I'm trying to accomplish here the best. And for that reason, I'm going to be using Angel Yeast WA18. Angel Yeast actually is sponsoring this episode. Thank you, Angel Yeast. Home distillers are probably most likely to know Angel Yeast from their baker's yeast, which I've used for things like vodkas a whole lot. Uh, and of course, their yellow label yeast, which are used to make the distilled rice wine. That stuff is freaking magic. But it uh, turns out they actually have a whole range of beer yeasts as well. If, however, you do want some more information on their products, check the description. Anyway guys, the reason I wanted to use WA18 is because it has a tendency to throw some fruity, sort of heading banana-y, estery flavors, along with some baking spice, sort of focusing mostly on the clove. I hope it's obvious why I think this yeast is going to fit this recipe really well. So I pitched 25 grams of the Angel Yeast at WA18 and fermented it at 25 degrees Celsius. Both of those things were done to try and promote more of those flavors coming out as the yeast ferments. 12 days later, it's fermented out down to 1.006 and it's starting to develop a little bit of lacto as well, which is fine by me. So I filled the pot up with 40 liters or around 10 gallons of the wash. Uh, and got stuck into the stripping run. Now, I couldn't put more than that in there because I was kind of terrified that this was going to puke all over the place. So I uh, set a couple of empty sight glasses at the bottom of the column. This is 100% running as a pot still. There's no plates in there. I just wanted to be able to see through those windows to be able to control the power up and down as we got closer and closer to puking. For this run, I collected down to 10% coming off the still. Uh, I'm not too worried about the yield on this, to be honest. I don't care at all for this whiskey. It's more that I'm very aware that flavors like pumpkin and spice are likely to sit down very close to the tails. So empty the leftovers out of the still, add the low wines back in along with all the rest of the wash that was sitting in the fermenter and get ready to start the spirit run. But, but... You didn't actually think I was done with the pumpkin yet, did you? <laughs> no way. Another two kilos of pumpkin prepared in exactly the same way as the first lot, with one minor difference. Five minutes before the roasting was done, pulled the tray out and sprinkled some pumpkin spice all over the top of it. Two teaspoons to be exact. I just wanted to give it a little bit of time in the oven to toast. Just a little bit. I prepared that pumpkin ahead of time and then popped it into the pot, along with the low wines and the rest of the wash. If you want to make your own pumpkin spice the same way that I made mine, here it is. I'll read it so I don't screw it up. Uh, one part ground cinnamon, one quarter part nutmeg, one quarter part ground ginger, and one quarter part clove. And guys, fresh grind your stuff. Makes it a whole lot better. This time I actually did employ two bubble plates. So we're going for a lighter, more towards a column stilled whiskey here. But we still need more pumpkin. So above the D flag, I had another empty sight glass with you know no bubble plate in it. I packed a little bit of copper on the bottom and up through the middle just to ensure that soggy pumpkin didn't block anything off and nothing crazy happened. 
Uh, and then around that, I stacked more, more of the pumpkin that was roasted and sprinkled with pumpkin spice. In terms of cuts, I took a very conservative 250 mils of four shots uh, and then collected heads down until the point where the hearts were just starting to show, kind of at the, the dicey line, and I collected a fair bit of kind of dicey or second hearts in a large container all the way down until the point where the flavors that we were really looking for started to show up. The crystal sort of candy, the grainy flavors, the uh, chocolates, the coffee, um, and some of the pumpkin and the spice. When those started showing up, I switched over into what I sort of called hearts for this run. Uh, when we got down a little bit lower, we started hitting that wet dog and cardboard. And I have to say, guys, unfortunately, pumpkin and wet dog is, oh, they come, they're pretty close. <laughs> So those questionable hearts I collected in the last jar, I recycled by popping them back into a smaller still, proofing them down to below 40% ABV, and you guessed it, adding more pumpkin with pumpkin spice into it, and redistilled it. Anything that was even remotely kind of jaggy and headsy got cut, uh, and everything below that was kept up until it started getting a little bit weird down near the tails. And that allowed me, I think, to pull out a little bit more pumpkin flavor without getting too far down into the tails. Remember, I need this to be a, a pretty approachable whiskey, not a grungy whiskey. So all of the keepers from both the uh, initial spirit run and the recycling run were added together and proofed down to 58% ABV. All right guys, so the bulk of the whiskey is going to age over a year. The plan is to be able to have this to drink next October. But uh, what I did do is take a small amount of whiskey and pop it through the ultrasonic and the sous vide machines in a two day forced aging experiment with some toasted, not charred French oak. And the idea with the French oak is to sort of double down on those spicy, interesting notes to try and play along with the pumpkin spice itself. <sighs> Guys, I'm getting a little bit sick of saying this, but when I don't say it, someone always, I don't know, completely misinterprets me. I don't do this because I think it tastes amazing right now. It tastes, it actually tastes pretty good. But I do it to give me a analog of what I think might happen in this over time. And perhaps, if it's not going to work, change tact now. So uh, some quick tasting notes, shall we guys? On the nose. But before that, I need to say a huge, huge thank you to the Patreons. Thank you so much, Patreons. I get to do this stuff because of you. And I, I really, really do appreciate it, guys. Thank you. It smells like whiskey. <laughs> Funnily enough. But in all seriousness, guys, it really does smell like whiskey. It doesn't smell like a crazy novelty drink. The plan for this was always to make a whiskey with a little bit of something else, like sitting right on that edge of, wait, is this, is this normal whiskey or is this flavored whiskey? There is some grain. There's actually some dusty sort of dark chocolate in there as well, which is wonderful. I'm very happy about that. I think kind of the cloves and the cinnamon, I, I get those flavors a lot from, from wood spice, but there's just a hint of nutmeg coming through. If you really go looking for it, that, that isn't quite a normal whiskey flavor. The only aroma that doesn't jive is I'm getting a very slight amount of raw pumpkin, which is bizarre to me. I do often get kind of a green grassy note from fresh whiskey, and I kind of wonder if that green pumpkin is similar to that and that's gonna fade away in time because the green grass note normally does fade. There is roasted pumpkin in there. I'm a little bit disappointed to say it's not quite as strong as I'd hoped for. Not quite as strong. Anyway, bottoms up guys, cheers. Actually, <laughs> all things considered, that is a fairly rounded and enjoyable product already. The second thing that jumps to mind straight away is that I've overdone it a little bit on the extraction. <laughs> I think you can tell that from the uh, from the color. So I'll definitely be dialing that down in terms of what I'm aiming for in the long term. Uh, but I also, I don't know, I'm torn. I really enjoy the French oak flavor in this, but I think it needs a little bit of barrel candy. And for that reason, uh, when I age this, I think what I'm gonna do is split it. I'm gonna put uh, some French oak in and also some charred, US white oak, just to give it some of that barrel candiness as well. Anyway, what else can we find in here? I get a lot more pumpkin drinking it than I did just nosing it, which is good, but it's still, I don't know, you still have to really go hunting for it, which isn't entirely disappointing because it makes it taste like whiskey, not like pumpkin. <laughs> but man, we put a lot of pumpkin into this. 
Anywho, uh, the spices work 100%. They work so freaking well. Uh, you would not, well, I couldn't tell that this was a spiced whiskey. I would assume that all of that spice was coming from the wood, and I think a lot of it is. I also get, on the finish, uh, a different kind of spice that's coming from the yeast, which is fun, because it doubles down on complexity between, you know, the actual spice we put in there, the wood spice, and then the, the yeast spice as well. I can't guarantee it's coming from the yeast, but it tastes like Saison, that kind of um, cooking spice, but slightly more phenolic. I think the, the fruity note from the Saison, you could convince me that it's in there. I'm not so sure about that because it blends into the, um, the sweetness of the crystal. And honestly, I think there's a little bit of that maple syrup coming in as well. And all those things together, they make it very, very delectable, to be perfectly honest with you. But anyway, guys, this has turned out wonderfully. I had a blast doing it. It's nice to push yourself and do something different every now and again, right? Uh, and I'm really looking forward to seeing what this ends up tasting like in a year. If you want to see what it ends up tasting like later on, I'll probably do some progress reports on it. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel, hit the notification bell, and, and guys, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up as well, because that really does help me out. Keep on chasing the craft, guys, and, and I'll catch you next time. See you guys.